So, um, so I have a, a blog post that will be coming out in the next week over at Excel.tv. And it'll be how to best do Monte Carlo simulation in Excel. And in the blog post, I'll talk about Monte Carlo simulation, what it is, and all the different kinds of uh, distribution curves you can use. So I'm not going to go into all that here. I just want to talk about how you set this up and how you make it work. Um, so first off, let's assume that you have just a normal business problem. We have, we'll say a forecast. We'll say this forecast is, in this sense, this is basically your mean or your average, but this is what you're forecasting. Yes? Okay. Can you increase the view? So what you have up here is, we'll say a, an average, we'll say um, of uh, revenue of $5 million, variable expenses in your forecast of $3 million. we'll say a fixed expense of $1 million. so you're saying your profit is going to be $1 million. Right, but you, you have a problem here in that things are never exact, right? It's never going to be exactly $5 million. In, in most cases, there's a, a distribution that you would expect to happen around that number. You know, there's a probability it'll be lower. There's a probability it'll be higher. And, and in this case, we're just going to assume, a, for the purpose of this Monte Carlo simulation, a normal distribution curve and say that, you know, as we run, we'll say in this case, a thousand different iterations of this dis in this distribution curve, what is, your pro what is your probability of being profitable? So first off, let's look at what a standard deviation is. In this case, we're going to say around your mean of $5 million for revenue, and these are just arbitrary numbers. We'll say the revenue is, the standard deviation is $1.5 million, and for variable expenses, it's 500000 so then how would you set this up so that you could figure out your likelihood of being profitable or your likelihood of making more than a million dollars? So let's go through the first step, which is your first iteration, and then we'll get into how you do a thousand iterations and how you figure out your probabilities. So first off, your first simulation. Now take a look at this. This is, the first thing that you do is, is get your distribution curve. In this case, we're going to use a normal inverse curve. And again, in the blog post, I'll go through all of the different all the different types of curves that you could use for probabilities. But in this case, we'll say you're using a normal dot inverse. There's quite a few of them. What is your probability? So in this case, I'm going to use a random number, a random number that's within that distribution. And that's going to ask me what my mean is. My mean is the 5 million, and my standard deviation here is 1.5 million. So in the simulation, oh, excuse me, you know, we have 7.5. 2 million. But since I'm using a random, you know, if I click it again, now it's 3.9 million. And, you know, so again, since I'm using random, and so I'm getting a number of, of variables, uh, uh, outputs or simulations that are within this distribution curve, right? And we can do the same thing with the expenses. Where we have a normal inverse curve, a random number within that normal inverse curve, and what your mean is and what your standard deviation is. And in some instances, you're going to have, of course, fixed expenses. So we'll say in this one simulation, this one likelihood or this one probability, you could actually not have a million, but 962,000. Or maybe we could do it again, and you're just as likely to have, you know, minus 990,000. And so then the question really becomes, once you've set this up and you've set up probabilities along this, dist along this distribution curve, if you did this a thousand times or a million times, what would it look like? And what would, how can you figure out probabilities of being profitable? So let's take a look at how that could look. And here's a thousand different, I just unhid this, but we'll show you how to set this up real quickly. And, and credit goes to uh, Matt McCarthy over on YouTube. So I'll link to that as well on how to set up the table so that this so this uh, Monte Carlo simulation works, but the first, very first iteration here is your 1.4 million. And you know that by us clicking in and hitting the refresh and you see the one point, negative 190,000. So how do you get the rest of these set up, right? And the way that you do this, and this is kinda, it's kinda tricky, is I would highlight all of, this, all of this section here and you'll see there's a table where a table has been inserted. And the way that's done then is you would do an insert excuse me, a data, data table, and within the data table here in your input column cell, this is a tricky way of doing this, and again, I'll link to the video that shows you how to do this, to actually link to a blank cell. And linking to a blank cell, it actually runs, and in most cases, it's not going to let me do it now because I've already set, set this up, but in doing that, it tricks the system into allowing you to do iterations for everything that's here. So what this means is now I have 1,000 different iterations 
of this distribution curve. So what I can do now is figure out the percentage of these that end up being negative. So let's, let's walk through that then. Here's your likelihood of losing money. In this case, it's 26%. And this is by using count if functions, grabbing my range here, and figuring out what is how many of those are less than a zero divided by my thousand iterations, so you have your percentages, and your likelihood of being greater than a million. So basically, this decision, even though it says on paper in a forecast that you're going to make a million dollars, realize in this decision, you have a 26% likelihood of losing money. And you have to figure out if that risk is worth it. Here you could also come in and just play with the numbers if you chose to and say, well, my standard deviation is really 500,000. This is really I don't know, 300,000. And all of your numbers would update then for you. So that is how to do a Monte Carlo simulation in Excel. A very high level. I'll get into this in a lot more detail in a blog post that I'll put out at Excel.tv uh, in the next week. Cool. So, yeah, cool. cool. <clears throat> well, um, you know what? Um, I'm going to give this a uh, four um, to because I've heard a lot about Monte Carlo simulations and weaknesses with Excel and how it does rand and rand between. Um, but this helps to explain what the heck is a Monte Carlo simulation. So um, I got a question about um, other uses of the Monte Carlo simulation. Right, so I, I've seen this primarily in finance and in doing risk management. So figuring out if you're, you know, if you're looking to make basically the, the scenario that I just put out. So if you're going to make a business decision, what is the likelihood that that business decision is actually going to lose you money? So it's one thing to, to do forecasts based on averages. And you'll always find a way that your forecast based on averages is always positive. And it's always NPV just barely enough. Right, your yeah. total rate of return is just barely enough. You can always find a way of that happen, and and really the the smart leader, uh, the the analytic leader, uh, will want to see that through a thousand iterations or so, or a million iterations, or whatever your software will allow to figure out really what is my likelihood, really what is my probability. And in this case, we just use a normal distribution curve, uh, but realize in other software there's you can do triangle curves where you know the minimum you could ever go is zero, so uh, standard deviations don't make sense. You know, it, it's it's not a it's not a curve where the the tails go on forever. Zero, you can never have less than zero. You can never have more than a hundred, we'll say. And so, you know, knowing how to set that up, I'll go into that in a lot more detail in the blog post. But you know, how, knowing how to set up those distribution curves is really the key. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool because I'm thinking about um, how you know forecasting will be done, and um, it seems like it takes emotion out of you know. A forecast being wrong, or markets going against you, or things that you had no control over, and just saying, you know, baking in some kind of reality that things can go the wrong way, or they can go the really right way. Yeah, just because the average market stock market comes back at eight percent doesn't mean you're not going to lose seven percent one year. That's right. part of a normal distribution. Yeah, Me too. All right. <laughs> it is worth it is worth realizing at the same time that you know people will assume normality when they're when they really may not even have basis to do that. You know they'll sometimes just do it because it's everyone knows it, it knows that distribution. It's the one you learn in statistics. So you know I I think that people come in sometimes thinking that you're going to remove uh, emotion, but really it's their they you can put bias into the model. That's all. I, that's all <laughs> I want to say. Absolutely, yeah. your 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 median could be different than your mean. Right, which is what you're saying. The data could be skewed right, the data could be skewed left, and there's there's a, a, a lot of different distribution curves you got to be concerned with. 